Welcome to the third degree. I'm Sule Prince and I'm here with Dr. Tony Costa. Dr. Costa, many people say that the word Easter is a pagan word and Christians should not uh, be using it. They argue that Easter came from the name of a pagan goddess. Is that true? Well, no, it's not true. And again, just like we saw in our uh, series on Christmas, the same thing applies here with Easter as well. People hear the same thing over and over and over again, and they simply repeat what they've always heard. Well, let's look at the word Easter. Um, the word Easter actually finds its origin in the Anglo-Saxon and the Germanic languages. And the word Easter is a word that has been appropriated for the time of the year when Christians celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, but they also include the death of Jesus and the resurrection. But it's interesting when we look at other European countries, you'll notice that most European countries do not refer to this time of the year as Easter. They will actually refer to the time as what they call in um, their respective languages, they refer to it as Passover. And that's because the Passover is the time period which when Jesus died and, and was resurrected and so forth. And the Greek word for that is Pascha. And this is where we get the word Paschal, like Paschal lamb from. Yeah. And in many languages, and this Pascha, this Greek word Pascha for Passover comes from the Hebrew Pesach, from where we get the word Passover. And many European languages will use words that sound like Pascha. So, for example, in, in uh, French, it's Pasque, and in, in Portuguese, it's Pasqua. Mm -hmm. And it's all derived from Pascha, the Passover. But the Anglo-Saxon language and the Germanic languages from which our English language evolves from did not use that word. What they used was a term that in English is, is Easter, and in German, it's Ostern. And the word Easter and Ostern are words that point to the East. Mm -hmm. So our, our English word East, for instance, is the same word that we find in the word Easter. Okay. And that's because the East is the place of the rising of the sun. The East is where the sun rises, obviously, and it sets in the West. And therefore, the word Easter has connotations with the concept of rising. Um, and it's also the place where the sun rises. When we look at the Latin word for east, for the east, it's the word aurora. And the Latin word aurora and the Greek word um, heos means the dawn. So notice how it associates the dawn with the rising see, yes. of the sun. So the Anglo-Saxons referred to the month of March and April, April as Easter and the Germans as Ostern. And the problem arises when we realize that the, the connection between Easter and paganism is due to a misreading or rather a misunderstanding by a Christian monk back in the 8th century by the name of the Venerable Bede, B-E-D-E. -E. He was a British monk who was the first to write a history of Christianity in England. And in his book called On the Reckoning of Time, Bede says that in the month of Oster, he said this was the time when the Anglo-Saxon pagans used to worship a spring goddess by the name of Oster, E-O-S-T-R-E. -E. Mm -hmm. Now, Bede wrote this around the year 730 AD, this in the 8th century. And the problem with Bede's interpretation is he's the only one who says this. Okay. And, and if you notice, when we looked at Christmas, there were two Christians who got us into trouble. In the late 17th century and early 18th century, there was a Protestant theologian, uh, Paul uh, Jablonski, and then a Roman Catholic theologian, uh, Jean Hardouin, who made some association with paganism and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now we've got another Christian in the 8th century who fumbles on this point because he's the one who is the first to mention this spring goddess who the Anglo-Saxons and the Germanic people worshipped a festival to her in the spring season. Now, here's the problem. Everyone simply took him for granted. They just thought he was right. But here's the problem. Historians who study ancient British paganism and Anglo-Saxon history have argued that Bede was actually dead wrong. Mm -hmm. In other words, Bede said this was only his interpretation. Mm -hmm. He says, this is my own interpretation. And what we find is that these historians have shown is that the Anglo-Saxons never worshipped 
a spring goddess by the name of Ulster. Mm -hmm. There, in fact, was no spring festival in March or April uh, during the 8th century, 7th century, 6th century, 5th century. In other words, Bede made this up. He, he thought he knew what he was talking about, but in fact, Bede was sadly mistaken. Mm -hmm. So because of this, people have made this false association with this goddess. Now, some other, some other people will say, well, Easter is, it comes from the word Ishtar or uh, Astarte and so mm -hmm. forth. Again, this is simply false. This is known as a phonetic fallacy where mm -hmm. okay. because a word sounds like another word, it must be that word. There's that parallelism yeah. again, mm -hmm. and that's known as a phonetic fallacy. Ishtar and, and Astarte actually um, were not spring goddesses. As a matter of fact, uh, these goddesses were associated with the moon. Mm. And Astarte, if you see statues of this goddess, uh, her, her statue has the crescent moon on her head. And that's because in the ancient world, the sun and the moon were believed to be uh, correspondingly king and queen, that the sun was the king and the, the, the moon was the queen. And, and therefore, these goddesses were sometimes associated with the, queen, with, with the moon. And so all of this to say that this misunderstanding comes from uh, Bede. Now, when we look at Anglo-Saxon history and, and their calendars, what we find is that the days of our week are, are definitely derived from the Anglo-Saxon tradition. So mm -hmm. the days of our week are all pagan. So Sunday was the day of the sun. Monday was the day of the moon. Tuesday was associated with Mars, the Roman god of war. Wednesday is Odin's day, the, the Norse king of the gods. And Thursday was Thor's day. Mm -hmm. Friday was Freya's day, the wife of Odin, the queen of the gods. And Saturday was Saturn's day. Now, of course, we don't, today as Christians, we don't worship these entities, but mm -hmm. this is a remnant of that history. Yes. But here's the difference. Our months are also pagan, but the Anglo-Saxon months were not like this. The Anglo-Saxon months were named after certain events or certain agricultural events that happened throughout the year. So February was called uh, Sol Monath, and Sol Monath means mud month. Mm -hmm. And that's because after the winter, and there would be a great melt, uh, usually in February, that Sol Monath was February, there would be a big melt and this would cause a lot of mud and dirt and so forth. November they called Blot Monath and Blot Monath means the, the blood month because it was in November that they would slaughter the animals in preparation for the winter. Now if you look at Easter or Oster month as they called it, Oster Monath was the name they gave to March, April. It meant, the word Esther there does not mean a goddess. It means literally the, t the month of openings mm. or the month of beginnings. And they called it the month of openings because this was the time when the buds, the tree buds would sprout. This was the time when buds would come forth and lilies and tulips would come out of the ground and so forth. And therefore, April would have been called the month of openings mm -hmm. or the month of beginnings. Okay. We have something similar to that in the Bible, in Hebrews, uh, Exodus rather, Exodus 12 verse 2, where, where God says that this month, the month of Aviv, which was later called Nisan, after the captivity, God says this month, which was the month of April, this will be the first of your months, the beginning of your months. And it's interesting that even in the Hebrew calendar, the month of April, or Abib, uh, literally means the month of ears. The word Abib means ears. Mm -hmm. And it referred to the ears of the barley, the ears of the corn, when they would ripen and they were still young and fresh. So we see that in the ancient cultures, the idea of the springtime was seen as a as the, the, the month of beginning, the, the month of the beginning of life, because this is when life would come back, that the, the flowers would, would come back and the trees would, the leaves would return, the buds would come. And as you can see, there's no association here whatsoever with a spring goddess. And therefore, uh, unfortunately, Brother Bede uh, got it wrong, and because of that, uh, ever since then, everybody has just been parroting this, the same story over and over again. But there is no association. The word Easter is not a pagan word. So the whole idea of Easter being a sex cult, that has no relation? None you know? whatsoever. Wow. There was no such goddess. Uh, Bede simply uh, thought she existed, but there was no record of the Anglo-Saxons or the Germanic peoples worshipping such a goddess, and they certainly didn't observe March or April as her as her season or her uh, the festival of that particular goddess. It doesn't exist outside of Bede. Very interesting, Dr. Gossa. Thank you. My pleasure.